Welcome, welcome everyone, every heart, every soul gathered here today to expand in consciousness, to remember the truth that lives in you eternally. And so I light this candle for the light of truth that lives eternally in everyone. Now, today's message, the Unity Saga. What is Unity's place in the world? Well, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Anybody have any comment? I like to call it the mouse that roared. I'd like us to be the mouse that roared. Because right now, yeah, if you stop the average person on the street and say, have you heard of Unity, a, a religious organization, a religion, Unity? Mm, was that Unitarian? No, it's different. No, I haven't heard of it. Enough of that, okay? And, and occasionally, I do meet people now who know of Unity. And um, what our place in the world, interestingly enough, has been is that in this new breakthrough of what they call new spirituality, <clears throat> that is a uh, you know department in the bookstores now and is selling more books than most uh, most categories of publishing. Uh, these these writers, the um, new spirituality writers, the first big breakthrough was with Deepak Chopra, and you know thanks to uh, Oprah Winfrey, I don't know what your opinion of Oprah Winfrey is, but she has been a tremendous influence and a spiritual leader in our culture to bring into the mainstream uplifted ideas, breakthroughs in thinking, and great thoughts, great thinkers. So she brought um, Deepak Chopra onto her show, and he hit the big time. And uh, if you really read his, his, his first book was uh, Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, he says the exact same things Charles Fillmore writes in his books, Christian Healing and Jesus Christ Heals, Keep a True Lent, all those, they are thinking along the same lines of the truth that human beings have the capacity to engage with the power that is divine, that is infinite, that is limitless, that is ageless. So our place as, as unity's place in the world is, is starting to be that we partner with and we share in our network these great new paradigm thinkers. We have had at Unity Village, at Unity School of Christianity, where they put on conferences and workshops and seminars and uh, retreats and classes. They have featured Deepak Chopra. They have featured Eckhart Tolle. They have featured Neil Donald Walsh, who had this huge best-selling series on conversations with God. And you know, D Neil Donald Walsh, it just so happened he came to do an intensive week with the ministerial students when I was in ministerial school. He has attended Unity his whole life. He was the choir director at the Unity Church in Seattle when he was younger. He doesn't say that because that would kind of maybe, you know, close some doors for him. But it is a fact <laughs> that he is a product of the Unity teachings. They have partnered, they have featured, um, did I say Eckhart Tolle? Gene Houston. Gene Houston is an extraordinary writer and philosopher, motivational, spiritual mentor. Uh, Hillary Clinton had Gene Houston come and mentor her. Gene Houston appeared at Unity Temple, gave a lecture while I was living in, in town there. She is so extraordinary. She is just one of the great, great teachers of new paradigm spirituality. And uh, so I say that is one proud place that unity has in the world, is welcoming the great new thinkers, the, the people who are ushering in this new spirituality for the mainstream culture and promoting them and partnering with them. And you know, Deepak Chopra said, boy, this unity is such a great movement. I don't know why everybody doesn't come here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's one, that's one thing uh, 
that we can boast about. Oh, another another one of the one of the real mainstream writers we we've we've featured is uh, uh, the celestial the the Celestine prophecy, James Redfield. Yeah, yeah. There's a rumor that he brought his manuscript to Unity to be published, and they turned it down, and then. <laughs> He went, and then Warner Publications picked it up and became the top bestseller in the world for almost seven years. They couldn't, it just kept flying off the shelves. It was translated into all these languages. They deny that. They say, no, he did not bring it here and we did not turn it down. <laughs> so it's just a rumor. It's an urban legend. Um, so, but when do we get credit? You know, when do we get to be the ones who are saying, Oh, those Unity people, they're really progressive. They, they welcome all these breakthrough teachings. They, they are um, on board with New Paradigm, Think Virtuality, the, the mindfulness. What about the, the Buddhist mindfulness and the Thich Nhat Hanh writings? How many of you have read a book by anything by Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist, the great spiritual teacher who's been... Um, so popular here in the Western, in America. Well, we, we, we teach his books, you know. I don't, think, I don't think he's actually appeared, but we did have a Buddhist monk come here twice in a row, two years in a row, and do a, several, several days of meditation and, uh, and discipline. That was a real treat. And you see, we welcome that. That's how we are. Is we see the truth in all teachings, and we partner with it, and we welcome it, and we, and we host it, and we expand it, and make it available to more and more people. And then there's the Disney connection. Now, does anybody mind if I talk about Disney? <laughs> it's like, you know, when I was telling you um, two weeks ago, that the transcendentalist influence was really carried in the fiction of Louisa May Alcott, who wrote Little Women, and she grew up with the transcendentalists. And that, that those values and those ideas of empowering people and seeing the good in them and believing in it and, and um, following your highest aspirations, that's all transcendentalism, you know. She reflected those in her books, and it spread out into the mainstream of thought. Well, Disney, you know, theoretically, he was exposed to Charles Fillmore's broadcasts in Kansas City right up until 1929 when Disney moved out to Los Angeles and decided to go into movies and animation big time. And I think he took with them these teachings that he heard on the radio. And if he didn't, if, if I'm wrong, it's still, the same, it's still the same ideas. It's still parallel ideas. He still, in his work, that influenced the imaginations and the hearts of little children growing up from 1930 on with an idealism, with a faith, with an empowerment to believe in themselves. Just think of that, that song in Cinderella. It came out in 1953, his, his original animated version of Cinderella. You know that song, A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes? That's totally metaphysical. A dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Whatever you wish for, you keep. A dream is a wish your heart makes. No matter how your heart is grieving, if you keep on believing, the dream that you wish will come true. Isn't that what we teach? That's exactly what metaphysics is all about, is the power of the mind to create our reality. It says that in our five basic principles. And there's Disney grinding it out <laughs> mainstream in, in a kind of mythology and fairy tale symbolism that expands the possibilities in the imaginations of people everywhere. Isn't that wonderful? It's a wonderful thing, and I, I think that we carry that same vibe, and maybe we influenced it. 
Now, I want to talk about the possible outcomes in the future for unity. And by the way, what is unity's place in the world is the place that you give it as the ambassador of unity itself. You know, try I try everywhere I go to just be my best self and refer to the work that we do here and attract people into it. I have had several occasions now where I'm just talking to somebody on the phone. Oh, somebody called and wanted to know if we could uh, have a meeting on gerrymandering. And I said, no, we can't. <laughs> and I said, but I know how important that is. And I, um, and the work that we do here is to empower people to express their highest ideals. She says, I think I want to come to that church. So I'm, you know, just right and left, I'm, I'm saying share this vibe and bring people into this experience because where else can you go where people are just with you and for you and encouraging you and offering you teachings and ideas to feed your highest aspirations? That's what we do here. So the possible outcomes for the future of unity. You know, there are mergers that could happen. Uh, there is the Global New Thought Alliance that was organized by, I think, Neil Donald Walsh and Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson's another one, by the way, who became spiritual leader of the Unity Church of Today, Renaissance Unity, in Warren, Michigan. She's not an ordained Unity minister, but she was granted permission to be by the so World Unity Worldwide Ministries to be the spiritual leader of that church for several years. It was a very exciting time. But the, the Global New Thought Alliance could be a umbrella under which Unity and other groups like the Centers for Spiritual Living, Religious Science, Science of Mind, uh, Christian Science could all come together as one and be a larger, stronger organization. I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about that. There could be mergers just between, look, for instance, Unity and the Centers for Spiritual Living, which is the religious science group. The, our, we are so alike with them that it might be efficient and uh, empowering for, for our organization and that organization to merge as one and increase our resources together. Again, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, you know, we have to look at uh, what is upon us. What is our responsibility? What is at stake in the choices we make and the support and expressiveness that we give to our unity work here? Because churches are becoming a thing of the past. In, in uh, all of Europe, there are no more churches. The churches are uh, they're just tourist places. And there are a few enclaves of religious people, but they're very cultish. They're nothing that we would want to do. They're, they're the very um, um, evangelical, doctrinaire, uh, I think, old paradigm types of, of faith practices. So I was sitting in a, in a restaurant this week and I, ha I was close enough to hear a conversation at the next table and it was a minister talking to his board of directors saying, you know, if we don't, if our income doesn't increase, if this continues like this, we're going to be out of business in two months. We're going to have to close our doors. I hear this a lot of places. We are not in that situation. And look, I want you to see, you know, people think that um, we've, you know, we're, we're not growing. We actually have grown quite a bit. There have been many new people who came and who were lit up by this congregation, but they had to go elsewhere. They had to take a job somewhere. I mean, think of um, Catherine, what's her last name? You know, who did our uh, Deeper Wisdom. What's her last name? Morrison, that's right, like Jim Morrison, Catherine Morrison, and then um, Jessica, 
who had to go to Houston, Jessica Longshore. She loved this church. Grace Wilkins has uh, come back. She'll be showing up when she gets her feet on the ground. She was at Gail Newton's class last week. So many people have come, and, and I was talking with someone who, who belongs to a traditional Protestant church who said, boy, we haven't had a new face come into our church for the last 15 years. And as the people die off, we're just going to go out of existence. I'm thinking, I didn't, I mean, I didn't say anything, but I could say we've had lots of new faces come here. And one of the things we need to do is transform our models so we can be more inclusive, because I know there are people in their 20s come, they like the message, they like the feeling, but coming to church on Sunday morning is not part of their cultural norm. Neither is giving a lot of money to a church part of their cultural norm. <laughs> I don't exactly know how to, uh, to change that, but I'm looking for a new model, you see. Now think of Unity Village. How many of you have seen pictures of Unity Village? How many of you have seen Unity Village? It's, yeah. It is my favorite place on earth. Uh, it's beautiful. The buildings are Italian Renaissance design. It has spacious uh, fields and woods, and it has three, three lakes, and uh, it's just blessed, you know. They now have a beautiful new conference center hotel. They have an assembly uh, building that holds 3,000 people. They are perfectly poised to be a world-class retreat center where people go to have an experience of transformation. And that is a real viable possibility, you know. But in order for it to happen, uh, they need to expand their reach they need to make their conference, their retreats, a lot more um, glamorous. <laughs> you know, right now the retreats are kind of like come and sit in the silence for four days. No. So, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, some new ideas to come in and, uh, a and create a retreat program that drew people from across all traditions to come there and have an experience. I think that is part of the future. But what is our place in the world, us, here in Muskegon? Our place in the conversation about humanity. Our place is to stand for the goodness in people. Our place is to stand for the de desire of everyone for peace, for universally humane and sustainable practices, and to usher in a new era of wisdom, deep insight into the inner and outer realms our place is to hold the space for the freedom that comes from wholeness, from love, and from joy. Amen. So let us now relax and prepare for this time of spiritual communion. Our time to listen, our time to experience that true oneness in the inner closet. And so we breathe deeply. We let go the thoughts of the moment. We let our hearts settle into complete trust of the divine. We feel our bodies gently resting in our seats, our hands openly receptive, our feet rooted in Mother Earth, our spine reaching to eternity. And in this beautiful light, let us say our meditation statement together. Put it on your program folder. It's a classic, wonderful statement for us now together.
All things are working together for the highest good, and I am working with them in the wisdom and power of spirit. And silently say that in your heart. And as we come to know this, to truly know that I am works in the wisdom and power of spirit for this revelation we give thanks as we now rest in the silence in the silence Enfolded in the light of God's love. So it is. Amen.
Thank you.